I'm going to invite up Shari, Steph Wiley, and I don't want to put anybody on the spot, but there are a few of you I've been in the chat saying, oh, maybe you want to offer your thoughts. So, um, Shari, I don't know if you know Steph Wiley. I don't think so. Um, Steph, I'm going to put, put you in, although you just moved because uh, you came on camera. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And let me just spotlight the two of you. I can spotlight the other folks as well, but because you both said you'd like to speak on all of them, but you'll talk about food. Um, speak about all of them or speak about food. What, you know, and introduce yourself. And we'll do this for a few minutes and other people can go in the chat and say, I want to step up. Okay. So. Go ahead, Steph. Okay. Um, yeah, I have to go soon, but I just wanted to um, thank Andrew and Nikki for, uh, her dedication to this food food space um so i i has some questions like to think about it's like what if the micro business grows um past the micro <laughs> like what what like what happens um if the micro business gets big um so that's that's one thing to to think about um i'm also thinking about what is the, what is the onboarding process for the micro business? What is the exit plan for a micro business? Um, I think both of those things are important to think about. Um, I was thinking about like the brightly cleaning model as like rep the replicate you know the replication of this kind of food guild. Um, I was also thinking about. Um, so, uh, so, so, sorry, so, sociocracy as the governance for the food guild for like the different the kind of the different buckets already exist. It's like this, this, you know, the micro, the the micro businesses, the governor, the the actual kitchen element, the, the different stakeholders. Um, there might be something there in sociocracy to like kind of take care of like a governance. Um, and um, yeah, those are like my my initial thoughts. I'm, I'm I probably have more, but those are the things that I was I was thinking about, Andrew Nikki. And just while you get ready to answer that, I am going to spotlight all this all the part all the students who presented, and I'm also going to add Michael if he wants to come on screen. He said he'd like to respond because you're responding to different ones. Shari said maybe you want to respond to the cooperative district. Michael said energy. So we'll spotlight everybody for now. Yeah who can oh. be talking and go right ahead, Antoniki, while I do that. So I just wanted to let people know, my name is Steph Wiley. I'm from Brooklyn Packers. We're a worker-owned food distribution co-op in Brooklyn, in bed -Stuy. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Steph. Um, I, <clears throat> so with respect to the, what happens if they grow beyond micro, first of all, that'd be an amazing problem to have. That'd be <laughs> great. Um, <laughs> and I think, you know, ultimately it'll come down to you know, whether being part of the guild continues to make sense, because hopefully there isn't a, a sizing, a natural sizing out that happens, right? I mean, hopefully all of the entities can grow together, um, but it'll very much be a test. So I'm not sure, but it's a great flag and as well as the, the onboarding and exiting question, because these are things you don't really, the onboarding, yes, but the exit, you know, people tend not to want to think about that piece, but it is extremely important as you know, you know, members may come, they may go, just depends mm -hmm. on a lot of factors. So um appreciate you raising those things. Thanks. Um, do you want to stay spotlighted, Steph, or do you want to disappear and let some other folks step up? I'm, I'm gonna disappear. I actually have to go. Thank you so um, much. But Steph. thank you. Great seeing you all, all the friends and new friends. We may see all of us on uh Laura Flanders show with the school uh, called uh, City uh, Works uh, in January. Uh, Hopefully that okay, works yeah. out. Great. Nice to see you. You too. Okay. Shari, would you like to share? So I brought everybody up. This will be our session to, and, and Michael, you'll, you can come on after that. Sure. Hi. So I'm Shari Sukup, the executive director of BCC. Thank you all for those presentations. They were fantastic. And the question I have actually, it could be for everyone um, if there's time, which is what so they're all really great ideas and I think they're in various right each of them has pieces that are already in place and then there's lots of ideas that you have to build on them so I think my question is if the you know if if all the stars align right and everything and you could name 
what you wanted to happen? What would be the next step for each of you in getting from where you are now to what you laid out in your presentations? What's the next thing that you need to move forward? And that's a great question. So I might help with facilitation in this order because that's who's on my screen. Andrew, Nikki, Ellie and Bill, Natasha and Amanda. What do you need to go forward? Thanks for the question, Sherry. Uh, hands down, a, uh, a very open and honest conversation with institutional partners to really understand how do we uh, organize this in a way that it, it will work for, for them as well as for the businesses that we're trying to serve. Ellie and or Bill? I'd say the, the biggest need or the, yeah, it, it's just the right group of people to deliver the curricula to, curriculum to. Um, I, I think that's the, that kind of outreach and, and digging into who, what's the right combination of interest, availability, and positions within organizations to be able to, to utilize that information effectively. Um, I think that would be the, the the most important next step, whether or not it's the very next step, I'm not sure. Natasha? I think similar to Anjaniki uh, and, and Bill and Ellie, it would be conversations with folks because I think what Tiara mentioned is something that in, in her uh, response was about there's other players um, in every community, in every neighborhood, and it could be very political. Um, and in that, you know, who, what are we dealing with? And I think if we had understanding of the landscape, it'll be really helpful to making sure the next steps are are the most logical ones and um, move things forward and not and not knock it down completely. Amanda, um, I would say partnerships. Uh, if there's agencies, organizations in Central Brooklyn that could use partnering on financial education or, um, you know, we've even, uh, our sister organization is Grow Brooklyn and they're the ones who do the free tax prep for folks. And so they've even had hubs in different areas around Central Brooklyn so that people can go there directly to get their taxes done, you know, spaces they're already in. Um, so yeah, things like that. And then if there's anybody who could be thought partners on this kind of governance structure, if anybody's tried it out, that would be helpful too. Um, I see some people are exiting. So Nick, if you would put the, the survey in again one more time. Um, I'm gonna say, I think some of these projects need paid staff to make it happen. When it's somebody's job, that's what they do nine to five. And this is not just everybody's job. This, I mean, you're each, everybody here already works. You're coming up with these wonderful ideas and where do we fit it in our day? And I think part of the responsible next generation is that somebody somebody does this. And, you know, each one is different, right? They're, they're different. You know, Natasha, you spoke about really maybe somebody studying this at Hunter College. I know uh, Gretchen and I spoke about a feasibility study that could be used for, for uh, policymakers. Um, but I think of Androniki's, uh, you know, the Food Guild really needing a network, someone who's going to pull all that together full time and think it through. I do think the decision making one um, in terms of de democratizing decision making can fit almost anywhere. Um, and it, it becomes something that every place people learn it. It might not be it needs its own um, its own paid staff, but it could really be a training component as an educator. I see that. Um, that needs, you know, infrastructure training. And likewise, the, the energy education one could be that there's someone actually putting together the training, you know, the packaging, the design, the outreach, the kind of work that needs to happen, uh, where if you have a full-time job doing something else, it gets a, there's a, it becomes almost a distraction. It needs to be someone's major thing. So those are, that's my <laughs> two cents I get to add. But because we've put together this program, the certificate program on workplace democracy and community ownership, let me invite Nick to again, put in the chat um, a link to that. If anyone's interested in doing that, you know, fulfilling what these students have done. We say at the end of the day, um, one, one needs to make a living doing what they love. Isn't that great? And so creating things that could be funded or could stimulate their own funding because we are creating businesses that uh, exchange money, then that would be great too. Michael, you are on, you're shaking your head, you're spotlighted, step up. Yeah, I um, just want to say I really enjoyed 
everyone's presentation. I'm Mike Palmieri. I'm with the Ohio Employee Ownership Center. And I myself just finished teaching a workplace democracy class here at Kent State University. It's the first time since I think 96 when John Logue uh, taught it. So we're really excited and it's amazing to see that this is going on. I'm originally from New Jersey and I uh, love New York City. But my, my question was to um, Bill and Ellie with the um, energy democracy because it hit really close to home for me. I, my kind of entryway into politics was through climate change. And I know a lot of younger folks are, you know, just quite different, right? Um, from generations prior in terms of interest. And so when you were talking about it, I'm wondering when you think of the audience, I know you, maybe you're, you haven't picked one yet, but when you think of it, is this something that you see being taught in high schools and elementary schools, is it college level? Is it more um, for activists or organizer types? Um, when you think about it, where's the first place you go in your minds, or maybe to frame it differently, what do you think's the place where you can get a kind of foot in the door um, most easily to, to get this curriculum out there? Because it's, I agree with everything you guys said, I think it'd be super important to get it out there. Um, yeah, I think, um, so the idea is you have to start somewhere, and I think we would probably want to start with more of the sort of activist organizations that have some kind of footprint in New York City and are sort of already doing organizing um, that may not be related to energy or climate necessarily, but this is a way to fold that in. I think to your point, it's a it's an issue that I think everyone at some point realizes they have to deal with here, you know, in one way or another. And I think also the really shocking energy bill increases that everyone has been seeing has certainly made um, things like this much more of interest. I mean, ideally, every single school would teach about how the systems that govern our lives work, including energy, but not just energy. Um, but I think starting with some of these organizations and then having them sort of amplify the information out within their communities is, is kind of the model that we were that we were envisioning. Um, and maybe it could grow from there. And, and I think just in terms of like density and rigor of the subject matter, you know, this is um, graduate level easily. And it's like multidisciplinary graduate level because you've got your your MPA subject matter, you've got your mechanical engineering, you've got your electrical engineering, you've got your codes and safety. So there's there's a lot of of really technical information to understand. And I think in order to be able to do that, uh, you know, the two of us can and and do frequently break it down for audience who don't have professional engineer stamps and all that great stuff. Um, but you do need to have kind of a, a strong baseline knowledge of just like how things work um, to, to be able to get anything from this. So to that end, I don't think, you know, like elementary, middle, high school, you know, I don't think they're they're quite where they need to be in their lives um, to be able to to do anything with this. Do I have uh, time for one one follow up? Um, so the the only question was going to be if. Um... I know you're you're working and based in New York City, but there's a great organization here in Cleveland called Cleveland Owns, and they're a grassroots um, kind of econ economic democracy organization um, organizing around community owned uh, cooperative projects. And one of them is community owned solar and community owned energy. And I don't know if you'd want to connect, but the director there, he would probably be able to provide you a lot of great kind of insights, because um, I think he's doing a lot of the same, maybe not formalized curriculum, but same kind of thinking and kind of putting it, um, putting it out there. So I just, just saying, I, I can shoot over the information, um, but yep. that's more a statement than a question. Michael, thanks. Send it over to me an email. I'm so yeah. glad you came. Your name came up today, something completely unrelated, and I sent you the invite. And I'm so glad you came because the fact is something you wrote has been something the students have read. And I, oh. <laughs> um, um, I think it um, it had to do. It came from the Ohio Employee Ownership Center. Yeah, 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 yeah. Multi-stakeholder report. I even asked you about it. So, oh, great! So there yep, really yep. is like a circuit here. I oh, want to. Right. Um, so I want to thank you. And that was short notice. And here you are all the way. Ohio's doing some amazing things. And that's interesting for us to watch, as I think we, we've, we've referenced Cincinnati, Cleveland. There is the Ohio Employee Ownership Center. And as you're mentioning, own. Um, I can 
you know, unspotlight those of you who have just come on. I want to put one person on the spot, Harry Duienza, if you're willing. Um, if there's anything you'd want to offer, you have such a long standing play in the community development circles in New York City. Um, and now with Parodnik, all the work you do, would you like to come on and be spotlighted with a question or uh, an offer? Maybe just a couple of comments. Okay. So, first of all, thank you for inviting me. I, um, <laughs> I love listening to really smart, engaged younger people because you guys are going to inherit a world. You're going to inherit a mess, and um, you know I, I'm very impressed with uh, everything that you're doing. Uh, just just a very few quick comments on a credit union piece. Um, I like the way it's transparent, and diverse, and, and and involves everybody. But just and it can be done. But just think about whether or not 35 people on a board might be unwieldy. Um, it, it's hard to engage 35 people. And the way you have your um, different committees set up for the membership, there's probably a way of doing that maybe with less people. But again, it can be done. It takes a lot of work. Um, the, food, the food guild piece, uh, that, that was um, really, I was really impressed with that. The only um, thing I thought about was that it seems very complex and is going to requ <laughs> require um, you're going to need staff and 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 uh, very engaged and uh, I, I and really I know you could you could probably run it, <laughs> but it's it, it does seem very complex and someone's got to, some people are going to have to hold that all together and so think about that um, the energy piece you know I've I've been involved with energy projects since you know doing fuel co-ops back in the 70s and um, 80s uh, the education piece is wonderful. And the cooperative development districts, the only thing that I can, couldn't wrap my head around was uh, in, in practical terms, you know, you have a geographical area. Um, a, a friend of mine once told me when I was doing work early in, in, this, in the South Bronx, you know, he said, Harry, you can't have socialism on one block. Um, and I'm thinking about the challenges that the cooperative business districts will have and and I'm trying to figure out how it actually operationalizes. Um, you pick a geographical area, or maybe it's in an area where you have struggling um, businesses. Um, but one thing that I found from housing is that we try very hard to keep our, our um, storefronts occupied and keep the rents cheap. And when we work, if you're gonna be working with government agencies um, in housing, it's almost like, no, we need to maximize income. So the more income we get from the storefronts, the less subsidy we got to pay um, for the housing. And so we're always struggling with trying to keep the rents affordable while the city's trying to make us, you know, go to market in a lot of the areas that used to be the inner city are now, um, you know, gentrified and you can get really good rents, but it's, it's hard to, to keep the affordability um, intact, especially if you're going to try to get um, money from the city and especially within a market uh, like this. So I thought everything, I mean, first of all, the, the, the intelligence, the energy, the commitment, um, I, I thought was just superb all the way across the board. So congratulations to all of you. I really, I, I, I have two kids, I need to put them to bed. <laughs> I wanted to stay for the whole thing because it was really good. So congratulations to all of you and, and good luck. Thank you, Harry. Thank you so much.